whether you're trying to get the achievement for the raid or you're just trying to auto battle through some imperial onslaught team composition is crucial to how you get that done which is why you need to go all in on su fang and ignore kuhai Greetings and salutations. Welcome back, fillers. Everybody's been wanting to have some type of content from me that has been going through builds, and honestly, their builds aren't really in a game yet, especially since we only have one access to one worm print as of recording instead of two per character. Uh, but in lieu of that, you could easily compare two heroes, and I figure what better thing to do than to talk about uh, Su Fang and Kuhai. Su Fang is a bonus hero, a welfare hero, if you will, that is given to us uh, through the raid event that's going on for Chinese New Year. Ukai is going to be added to the summoning pool, so everybody going forward is just going to be able to pull for him potentially. He's also the first sword unit that Wind gets, which is pretty exciting. Hukai has a really nice kit, actually. He has a good damaging power for his uh, main skill. His secondary is pretty interesting. I usually hate uh, dedicating resources to adventurers whenever they have something that has a four-strike uh, reliant capability, such as he does. However, that additional crit damage uh, percent chance is awesome, and you can do a lot of great things with that. As a matter of fact, with that, if you do partner him uh, up with somebody that's going to give him extra percentage, whether that is Su Fang or not, you can actually get some really sick things going on. Long Long is a new dragon that got introduced along with both of these guys, and if you put Long Long on top of uh, Kuhai, you're going to have an incredible, incredible percentage chance to crit, especially once you proc that second ability. That's going to give you enough up that you're going to continually get that, and there's a lot of other worm prints that are going to be able to help us leverage this. The biggest ones are Levin's Champion and Resounding Rendition. Both of these are just going to give you an extra percentage to crit whenever you're above 70% health, which is really nice. Uh, Resounding Rendition has an additional rider there that's going to be uh, pretty nice as far as using your uh, primary damage skill over and over and over. Uh, right now, as a recording, Durandal is the only 5-star weapon that sword users for Wind can have access to on a regular, so they will be uh, sort of gimped with their heroic epic as the power on that uh, giving you that little defensive buff it's a nice buff but it's not going to help our damage output and unless you have somebody like low win on the team it's not worth building around that so that's what we got to work with there's not even really a budget option i mean you could go dueling dancers but honestly you need to proc your second ability there so doing that is going to interrupt the uh, flurry devastation that uh, da dueling dancers is giving you so it's really just worthless like otherwise if you're actually running uh kuhai you can go ahead and change things up you can go ahead and use all the different worm prints that are going to leverage four strikes uh giving you things like extra damage uh let's start off with some uh, of the cheaper things here you could go ahead and do something like the warrioresses or you could do something uh, like uh, Fresh Perspective, those are going to be good. You have Stellar Show, that's also a fantastic one if you're actively running and using four strikes. Uh, stunning people is great. It's not necessarily a given that a boss monster is going to have stun resistance anymore. So having that ability is not worthless. It is something that you can not base everything on, but you can rely on it. If you don't have long long you could go ahead and still use somebody like zephyr or rock in order to increase his damage potential uh then you could just use uh worm prints like astounding trick if you manage to grab that one also jewels of the sun is also a really good high power one in this arena uh, i mean there's other things i mean there's the three star uh knight harbinger and there's also some other five star ones like uh, gentle winds uh evening of luxury stuff like that that if you don't have uh, long long you can go ahead and put these worm prints on him and it's going to actually increase his damage potential which is significant problem is su fang can take all of that stuff and use it better as a matter of fact he doesn't have that extra 10 percent going on for him intermittently he just has his own built-in uh percentage chance increase so you might as well just go ahead and give him zephyr or rock uh, or in this case, if you really have long, long, you could do that, but the crits aren't going to be as impressive. Regardless, uh, build for build, <laughs> Su Fang is just better. <laughs> he's just better. He's better in AI hands. Uh, he's better for the raid. Uh, just 
better. The only problem with Su Fang is he doesn't have 100% resistance like pretty much all of his other peers at the time of recording do. Drives me nuts. If you could go ahead and do something like Promises in the Rain, it's actually going to help him out in a couple other regards, but it's not going to really increase his damage. It's just going to make sure that he's not going to be getting bogged. But here's the thing. If you put him in AI hands, if you let him run in AI hands, not only is he still just better in AI hands uh, than... Uh, too high. However, on top of that, uh, he's going to dodge most of the uh, bog that he would receive anyway. Now, of course, they're great together, and they can use different worm prints and be able to go into a team like that. Uh, so if you have them both and want to use them both, yeah, no, they, they, they combo really well. Uh, if you only want to put one in your team, it really should be Su Fang, and not just for the raid event, but for everything going forward as well. It's just, he's just that much better uh, at everything. Of course, I'll say right now that honestly, crit-based builds are something that drive me nuts because there's just not enough warm print options. I mean, everything I was naming was like premium, like five-star warm prints, uh, things that you probably wanted to throw away because you got mad because you got pity broken by them. But regardless, I mean, it's there's a couple of like neat tricks here and there, but otherwise, it's not it's not usable because it's just not good enough yet. But I think that might change once we get two warm prints on uh, different heroes. Really need to have something there in place of these really bad percentage chances to be able to crit. So I hope you're able to build out your Su Fang already. If you haven't been able to do that, what's wrong with you? Go watch this other video over here so that you're not caught off guard with the next raid. And do me a favor if you like a drug all your last information on first like grandma's cookies, hit that subscribe button. My name is Deltran. Thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate all of you. And until next time, take it easy.